Okay, this is my list, but it's also not my list. People don't know who the bro people don't know who the best defender in the league is. They don't. A lot of time, it's just. I think it's more narrative than the MVP race. Uh, well, of course it is. It's significantly more narrative than the MVP. When you're talking MVP, you usually look at the stats. You look at how many wins a team has and the uh, the and, and efficiency as well, obviously. And the MVP sort of uh, shows up out of thin air, and people will take more time to explain their calculations about the MVP. DPOY, no. Everyone just kind of gets to the end. They're like, oh, this guy, maybe. How about him? Seems good. What do they pick? They pick the guy, the best defender on the best defense. That's what they do. That's how it works. That's how it's always going to work. Because I have a bone to pick with who they think the DPOY is going to be this year. You're probably already going to know. You're probably already going to know, right? You already know who's going to win DPOY this year. Trust me. Because Vegas knows. If Vegas already knows, it's a done deal. But Brook Lopez is on my list. He's number 11. Why is he Why is he 11? I think he should be in consideration. I think he should be number one. The Bucks defense is not that great this year. Okay. They have a low defensive rating. Brook Lopez's defensive rating is 117. That's not good. That's actually a really high. You don't want high for defensive rating. You want low for defensive rating. Because what it means is out of 100 possessions, how many points does the other team score? You want less points. You want your defense to be good and not let the other team score. 117 points out of 100 possessions isn't good. Brook Lopez's defensive rating isn't good. And that's why he's not in the conversation. Actually, 1,500 plus 1,500 odds. It's actually not bad for uh, the Milwaukee Bucks having such a bad defense, but I think he should be the Defensive Player of the Year, or number two. Number two for Defensive Player of the Year, why? Contested shots. 17.3 contested shots per game. The next guy up is like 12.2. Brook Lopez is getting a hand in front of everything. And because his team isn't good at defense, no one is talking about it. And 2.7 blocks. Do these uh, do these contested shots result in blocks? Is he just throwing a hand up willy-nilly? Like, yeah, there's my hand. Um, I threw a hand up. I played defense. Can't say I didn't do it. No, he's third in blocks this year. So, what up? And half a steal a game for a center? Dude, this guy, he's a great defender, but he's on a bad defensive team. So he can't win defensive player of the year. Because no one wants to take the time to really analyze who's playing good defense. Nor do I, though. Then we got Giannis again. Same problem. Actually, Giannis has a better defensive rating. Maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe Giannis is better than Brook Lopez on defense. Maybe I'm missing something here. Why is, you know, when uh, Brook's in, the other team is scoring five more points than when Giannis is in, you know, pound for pound. Giannis has 1.1 blocks a game and 1.4 steals. So Giannis actually gets more steals than he does blocks. He's actually doing a little more perimeter defense than he is, uh, you know, blocking people. He's not playing down low in the post at all on defense. He's doing that perimeter defense, which is pretty cool. A lot of uh, fours. Well, some fours can do it. A lot of guys as tall as Giannis can't really do it. So I put Giannis on my list. Brook and Giannis had the same Vegas odds. Last week I botched the... Uh, the Vegas odds. I said if you put a dollar on it, well, if you put a hundred bucks on it, you can win fifteen hundred bucks. I'm gonna do it just by the hundred. So if you put a hundred bucks on Giannis, you could win fifteen hundred bucks if he does win Defensive Player of the Year. Don't do it though, because you're gonna find out why later. Um, Victor Wembanyama. Victor, he should be Defensive Player of the Year, but the Spurs are bad. His defensive rating is 112. That means the other team is scoring 112 points. Remember, this is significantly less than Brook Lopez. Uh, he's a better defender on a worse team. So, Wembenyana, Yama, with 3.2 blocks, he's leading the league in blocks. He should be in the conversation. 1.1 steals for his center. He's also stealing the ball a lot. He's not on the contested shots list. So every time, pretty much like, you know, maybe 50% of the time he raises his hands, he's getting a block. He should definitely be more so in the consideration. Now he's uh, plus 2,500. He actually is less than Brook Lopez and Giannis. So he has less odds because he's on the Spurs who are bad and have a bad defense. But again, the Bucks probably have a worse defense. 
He's the defensive player of the year. Or he, he deserves to be. And we'll get to it. But Victor Wembanyama is really good. I don't think they're just going to give it to him because he's a rookie. But I don't know. I'm not sure. He's playing really well, though. This guy could be the best player of all time. He has all the tools. He has all the potential. And he ain't scared of nothing. Uh, I think these, uh, these new guys in the league, these younger guys in the league that are coming up, they aren't entitled. I'm noticing this. There have been a wave of entitled number one picks and number two picks in the past, but I think they've learned their lesson. These guys are coming in and they're working hard and they're being humble. These guys are going to be some of the best players that we're ever going to see because they've seen so many of the mistakes. You know, the Japari Parkers, the Kwame Browns, the Anthony Bennetts, the Zion Williamsons, the John ja Morants of the world have made and they're going to say, you know what? What if I focus on the main thing and not get too distracted? Shea. Shea is actually the guy I think should be Defensive Player of the Year. Why am I saying that? Do I know what I'm talking about or am I just kind of saying uh, hot take? You know, when people say hot take, then you ask, well, why do you feel that way? Why is that your take? And they're like, I don't know. I just, uh, just, uh, you know, wanted to have an opinion that might get a reaction. Well, I'll tell you. He almost gets a block game as a guard, which is, you know, we're, you're going to see. That's not, doesn't happen a lot. 2.2 steals a game. Leading the league in steals. And his defensive rating is 111. The lowest we've seen so far. Is it the lowest we're going to see? No. That's okay, though. He's getting 3.6 deflections a game as well. That's leading the league, too. He's also leading the league, I think, in... He's up there with loose balls recovered, I believe, as well. Um, that's not necessarily a defensive stat. Or is it? I'll count it, but... He's plus 220,000. Uh, so you bet 100 bucks, you could win 2,000 bucks if. Uh, I think I'm reading that right. Yeah, if you bet 100 bucks, you could win. I'm going to stop doing the math on this. I can't do the math on it. I can't do the math on the gambling odds. He's low. People don't think he's going to win Defensive Player of the Year because people aren't paying attention. Because he kind of should. He kind of should. He's everywhere. He's everywhere out on the court. Just because his defensive rating isn't super high because his team's defense isn't very good, that's why he's not Defensive Player of the Year? Pay it. No one, you know, pay attention. Watch some games. Try to figure out who's really making an impact out there on defense. Don't just look at the team that has the best defensive rating and say, hey, who's the best defender on that team? And give them the award. Don't just... You know, does Defensive Player of the Year matter? Do people care? Do people care about first team all defense, second team all defense? Or are we just sort of, is it sort of this thing that people put, we have an award because we can't just not give an award for defense? Because, uh, do we care? Do we care about defense? No. No, we don't. So Bam's defensive rating is actually pretty good for his team because his team's defense is okay. It's not awesome, but his is pretty low. He's leading the league in box outs. Again, not necessarily a defensive stat, but it shows the efforts there. Well, I guess it is a defensive stat. Defensive rebounds. They don't, they don't count. Nobody even, we don't even know what the criteria is. Do we know if like a defensive rebound, is that good defense? I don't think so. It doesn't seem like someone's like, that guy's such a great defender. Do you see how many rebounds he got? No. We don't. Gets a block a game, gets a steal a game. The block and steal a game combo. He should be getting more blocks a game if you're the center. Who's blocking shots on that Miami Heat team? That's always been my problem with Miami Heat is that the tallest guy they have out there is Bam Adebayo. Unless they have like Cody, had, you know, Cody Zeller or Kevin Love out there last year, but those guys aren't even centers. So that's always, that's really the reason I always am kind of down on the Heat is because I look at their lineup the biggest guy out on the court is Bam Adebayo. He's short. He's 6'10", 6'9", something like that. But he's, uh, he's 3,400. So you bet 100 bucks, you could win. Let's figure this out together. If you bet 100 bucks, you could win 340 bucks. I think that's how it works. Yes, you could win 340 bucks if you bet 100 bucks on Bam Adebayo. He won't be Defensive Player of the Year because the Miami Heat just aren't good enough. They're not, you know, 
Uh, cause that's not how it works. Remember, there's a formula. There's a formula. But Bam's good. I don't know. What a boring thing to say. Chet Holmgren, a rookie, coming in the league and being so incredibly dominant. Uh, let's see if Chet, if Chet has better odds than Wemby. Okay, so Wemby has a bit better odds uh, than Chet to win Defensive Player of the Year. And I think Chet's would only be so high because his team's better, his defensive rating's better, a little bit. Let's go back, let's look, yes. His defensive rating is a bit better. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> I mean, Wemby has way better stats than him. 2.6 blocks, great, he's up there. He's like kind of leading the league in blocks. 12.9 uh, 12 contested shots, he's getting a hand up on everything. I believe he's this leading, he's the second best shot contester in the league besides Brooke Lopez. So give it up for that, that's, uh, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty good. And he gets like, you know, but Wemby has way better stats. You know, that's how it is. Um, yeah, let's keep it pushing. But, you know, Chet Holmgren and Wemby, both of them being rookies, even though Chet was drafted. You know, why do we gotta stop calling Chet a rookie? We gotta stop doing this. It is annoying. It's, it, you're not a rookie. If it's your second year in the league, I don't care if you didn't play, you're not a rookie. And I think, you know, there's gonna be that technically you are a rookie because this is your first, dude, like, I don't think you'd run into anyone that would say, uh, yeah, the second year guy that didn't play any games his rookie season should be counted as a rookie. I don't think anyone, maybe some people would. I just don't really like it. You have the experience. You've been like training with an NBA team for an entire year, and now you're going to be compared against all these guys who are fresh out of college or G League or, you know, whatever, the Australian Basketball League. I don't know. Stop. We, yeah, I don't like it. Derek White, for some reason, is on the list. I think it's because Boston's defense is really good. He has the lowest defensive rating uh, so far. It, you know, a steal, a block, a block for a guard. That's pretty impressive. Um, but that's basically it. This is what I'm saying. Look at it. Like, look at the, like, look at what they do to come up with who's going to win the uh the um, the dpoy is they just kind of look at defensive rating they say boston's good who's kind of the anchor of that defense and i guess they're going with Derek white and not drew holiday drew holiday does make some lists but Derek white is always way up there we can take a look at the end we can kind of look at the odds i think he's like fifth in dpoy odds so but he hustles out there good for him i like him so i'd like to see him win just because i think he seems like a good dude uh humble guy Jared Allen, he's number two. In Vegas, he's number two. So if you bet a hundred bucks, you could win a thousand bucks. Forgive me if I'm wrong. So yeah, you could win a thousand. You bet a hundred bucks, you could win a thousand dollars if you put your money on Jared Allen. He's number two. He's number two. Y'all know who's going to be number one. Uh, contested shots, he's up there. I love contested shots. I think they're important. Getting a hand up. Getting a hand in a face is very important for uh, defense, I think. I believe that. You know, it's harder. An open shot is way easier. And if you got someone's hand in your face, it's harder to see. It's harder to make the shot. So give the man some love. Uh, you know, he's not doing great on steals. Kind of weak sauce on blocks. So those contested shots aren't really amounting into blocks. But his defensive rating is good, and the team's good, and the team's defense is good. Uh, so that's how they do it. So Jared Allen, I like him too. So why do I say so like 38 times? You get in a rhythm of how you speak. You get in a rhythm of how you speak, and you repeat certain things as a mechanism to fill time. Jaron Jackson Jr., I threw him on here. He's not even close, though. Wow. 25,000 odds. His defensive rating is great, though. Here's the thing. Memphis does not have a good defense. How do I know Memphis does not have a good defense? Well, they don't have a good offense, but I know they don't have a great defense because I know they don't have great defense because they're not a good team. You know, they're not an incredible defensive team. Uh, but he is like, the, he, you know, He's killing it, man. He's doing really well on defense, but his team isn't good enough for him to win. Um, but he won last year. He actually had the highest odds. 
at the beginning of the season. He had the highest odds at the beginning at the beginning of the season. People thought he was going to run it back, Defensive Player of the Year. Hmm. He's not going to because Memphis is bad, which is kind of funny. If their offense was better, he would actually have a better chance at Defensive Player of the Year. Ironically, is it ironic? Sure. Rudy Gobert. Rudy's going to win. Defensive Player of the Year. You're not going to make any money. It's negative 700 for Rudy Gobert to win Defensive Player of the Year. You're not going to win any money. Don't even bet. He has a great defensive rating. That's the thing. He has one of the best defensive ratings in the league. And he plays a lot. So, you know, 2.1 blocks. He's kind of up there with Wembenyama. Let's go back and look at Wembenyama's stats. 3.2. Actually, he's not. Oh, my gosh. Dude, Wembenyama is heads above when... Oops. Mm, spoiler. Wembenyama is heads above everyone else. 2.1 blocks a game, I think, is second most in the league. Uh, basically, now he's not really getting any steals. He's contesting some shots, but he is the anchor. That's the thing. When no one wants, everyone wants to phone in who they think the DPOY is, they're like, who's good at defense? Minnesota? Uh, Rudy's good at defense. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's the anchor. Yeah, we can get behind that. He's the anchor. Without him, the ship will sail away. So... Rudy Gobert, everyone, is that who we're voting for for Defensive Player of the Year? Yeah, sounds good. If I if I vote for Rudy, you're all not going to call me an idiot? Yes, we will not call you an idiot. That's the consensus. But Anthony Davis actually has the best defensive rating of all these guys, which is kind of funny. And you may think, well, you're a Laker homer. You're a Laker fan. We can't trust you. I don't care. Lakers suck. How about that? Did I prove that I'm not a homer? Lakers are ass, dude. I do not think they're good. I don't know if they're going to make the playoffs. But you got to give Anthony Davis some love because if we're going to go by defensive rating, you got to put Anthony Davis as the defensive player of the year. You just have to do it. And I think this could happen. If you bet 100 bucks, you could win $3,400. And I might do it. I might do it. People don't like Rudy Gobert, so they might not vote for him just because they don't like him. And if the Lakers get good, if the Lakers do get good, which I don't think they will because, like, uh, the roster is not good. The roster isn't great, dude. They didn't pick up anyone. You still got D'Angelo Russell, who is good, then bad. Good, then bad. Good, good, bad, bad, bad. You have to be, you have to be good like twice as many times as you are bad, and that's not D'Angelo Russell. This isn't about D'Angelo Russell. This is about Anthony Davis. And he's, he's contesting a lot of shots, and I'm a queen for contested shots. So I think he should be Defensive Player of the Year. Am I going to place a bet? I don't even know how. I lose money on bets all the time. I don't even gamble. I don't even want to hook a credit card up to a FanDuel or any of that BS anyway. So Anthony Davis, DPOY. Never got it before. I think Rudy will have it for the fourth time if he wins this year, uh, which is, I think, on par with Ben Wallace and Dikembe Mutombo. I could be wrong. That's a Hall of... He'd be a Hall of Famer. He'd have to. All right. Thanks for being here. Be good to your mom. Eat a corn dog.